Hey everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm the Chess Nerd and today we'll be looking over my only game against the one and only Jeffrey Siong, um, great grandmaster in the US. Uh, I think he's 20 years old now. I played him when we were nine years old. So you can understand how good of a young chess prodigy he was. And uh, yeah, enjoy this video, it's gonna be amazing. So a little bit about the tournament. I played in the North American Youth Chess Championship, NAYCC, in 2010, because it came to Montreal one year, my city. Usually it, it expands across the US, and people traveled from all over uh, North America, so Mexico, US, and Canada, to go to these tournaments, young players, right, for youth. Um, and so in 2010, I had the luck uh, to host it in Montreal, and so I was a player in that tournament. Now, what I didn't tell you is that in round one, they paired me against someone who will be one of the best chess players in all of North America soon, uh, Jeffrey Xiong. And let me tell you, <laughs> in 2010, when he was nine, I was nine, we were very different in rating. I mean, he was already a monster. You have to understand that he was 2137 uh, ELO rated, and I was only 1120 rating. Um, which is quite a big difference. I mean, he's a thousand points higher than me. And so you can understand that he absolutely demolished me. I didn't even have a sink of a chance. I think after 10 moves, I'm pretty much losing. Um, so yeah, this will be interesting to see. And, you know, of course, to laugh at me because you know what? That's, that's the fun of it at the end of the day. So just a little bit about Jeffrey Zhang. He is the third youngest U.S. chess grandmaster after Awander Leong and Sam Sevian. Um, and so at age 14, four years or five years after our game, he became a grandmaster. You have no idea how much I got demolished in this game. He absolutely rattled me. He's 32nd in the world. Do you guys understand? He's 32nd. I played against the 32nd best player in the world 11 years ago. 32nd best. This is crazy. <laughs> And he's fifth best chess player in the USA. <laughs> fifth best, and I played him. So it's a blessing in disguise, I guess, that I, got, that I lost against him all this time so I can share this great story, a uh, short story, 20-move <laughs> game. Um, but none, none, nonetheless, um, a, great, a great game. So yeah, soon to be sixth uh, best in the world because Aronian is getting in there, but Jeffrey Zhang, uh, at 20 years old, is the fifth best chess player in the US currently. Uh, 2,709 points. Wow, he's a 2,700. I played a 2,700. Isn't that crazy? Wow, okay, I'm just like so impressed <laughs> at my achievement here <laughs> to get paired in the first round against Jeffrey Xiong. Paired in the first round doesn't mean I had a good rating. It just me meant like I was, I was not in the good section for the Swiss pairings and I got paired against a really strong player in that tournament. So just before uh, showing you guys the game, I just wanted to prove to you that I actually played him. So this is the CAN base. Basically in chess base, there's a database for all games that are played in Canada. And so this is the, the database in Canada and these are the games that he played uh, in Canada. And look at that, um, Montreal, Can Canada, 2010, I'm playing Jeffrey Zong. He beat me, he was 21.37 at the time and I was only 11.20. Um, and yeah, I got absolutely demolished in 27 moves, as you can see. So let's get on with the game. So we started uh, pretty silently. I mean, you know, development, he's, a, he's still a 2100. He owes me that much. And uh, so I'm the black pieces and he's the white pieces. Um, so, you know, all about advantage here. Um, pretty standard Italian so far. And we merge into a Re Lopez with this Bishop B5. Now, my Re Lopez was not that good at the time. Now I play the Schliemann's Gambit, which I think would stand a chance. Um, but nevertheless, I play uh, a6 here. And I think I'm a bit blurry on the theory, if I'm being honest. So bishop a4 and now b5. And I think I need to play knight f6 first. And so now d3 and now b5. Um, so standard of theory, which I didn't know at 1100. Uh, so just doing the wrong order there. So b5, bishop b3, and now bishop e7. Okay, development move. I mean, knight f6 is more known, but... Um, so the reason why I play bishop e7 before uh, knight f6 
is that I think I was scared of knight g5. And here, uh, you know, this is still good for black, even though, you know, at the time fried liver was a big thing, still is uh, at that level too. And so I was scared of this kind of combination on f7. Um, but, you know, I can refute with d5 here and stop that process. And so this works perfectly. After e takes d5, I simply have knight d4, trying to chop off the bishop, and eventually I'll regain this d5 pawn. But my move is just as good, it's just I was very, very scared to play against somebody uh, twice my rating, uh, so to speak. So castles, knight f6, and now rook e1. So he's playing a very straight up uh, setup, probably theory, I don't know, I'm clueless at the time, and I play castles as well. So now a4 and bishop b7. Not too scared of him opening up the a file, I'll just take back and uh, our rooks will, will collide and it'll be fun. Um, so that's what I was thinking. Uh, d3 and now bishop b4. This is a terrible move. And I say this to all my students because um, some of them do it. Um, so bishop b4, just lame a move, just attacking the rook. Um, I like a pinch once in a while, but when it's refuted with a c3, that directly says, hey, look, you have to get out of here uh, type move, um, then it's just bad because this helps the white position and refutes my bishop. And so I lose a tempo going back uh, all the way to c5. And so, you know, this could have helped him directly to play d4 here and just absolutely smash me. But uh, Jeffrey Zhang uses the tempo to play bishop g5, a nice pin on my queen, a nice pin on my knight, right? And so now it's getting a little warmer. I'm seeing these d4 plans very scary. So h6, bishop h4, keeping the pin on my knight. Uh, b4 and now d4. So as I said, looks appetizing, is appetizing. Breaks open the center and now takes, takes, and uh, once my bishop folds, uh, Jeffrey Zhang, the center is all yours um, and pursues with bishop c2. So here the idea behind bishop c2 is that Jeffrey is setting himself up with a battery, so coming with queen d3 soon and trying to bank on this h7 square. Of course, the center helps him very much so because he has the ability to play moves like e5, kicking my knight out of there and uh, letting go of this h7 square, which he will pursue. Um, a little bit of a spoiler alert. And so already here, like just to tell you guys, um, this is plus one for white. So I'm already like a pawn down, technically speaking. Um, and so here d5, I try to challenge the center, uh, put my pawn there, but Jeffrey plays very well. So he exchanges at once on f6, leaving my bishop to be bad once e5 pushes. So look how bad this bishop is. Um, relatively low space, and once it goes back to e e7, uh, no squares, right? So making the best out of his position to make my pieces the worst. My knight is the worst, so coagulated, can't go anywhere, has no future, right? Look at my bishop, my light squared bishop, no future. So he breaks down on my own um, pawn, and I'm blocking myself at this point. So it's quite ridiculous how his pieces are all acting in chemistry, right, with one another, soon queen d3, and my pieces are all um, misfunctioning. Uh, so very interesting play by Jeffrey Zhang. Bishop e7 and now queen d3. So preparing this battery of bishop and queen. A battery is when you have the stronger piece on the end side of, a, of an attacking uh, duo um, going along the same traje trajectory, uh, so on h7. And so this threatens mate. I see this, I'm not that uh, bad at 1100, I can still see threats, and I play f5 here. So <laughs> the computer hates f5, I go down to plus 4 for white, uh, which is really minus 4 for me. And so um, just would have rather g6 here, very solid, even though I was taught at the time that g6 is super bad uh, move, which it is, because look at all my dark squares uh, getting uh, super weak. But uh, a good plan after g6, if you ever get in trouble, is to create a fianchetto bishop with the maneuver rook e8, bishop f8, and now bishop g7. Now you've artificially uh, created yourself a fianchetto bishop, which would have been nice. But I'm a rebel, so I play f5, and um, Gotham chess fans would be pleased to know that there is a winning en passant move for Jeffrey Zhang. So reignitioning uh, this threat on h7, uh, while taking my pawn, so this is very dangerous. Uh, dangerous waters, dangerous waters. Takes back with the rook, so I'm seeing this mate that was prepared. Uh, he plays it anyways, and my king is in the middle. 
Uh, this is completely losing, plus five for Jeffrey Zhang at this point in the game. Knight e5, so looking to expand on this square and even on, on capturing this f7 square, threatening mate on h8. So queen h8 threatens mate. And so this kind of forces me to take, and he doesn't take with the rook. Well, why would he do that? The rook has no future here, and uh, the rook lift would be quite useless, right? So he goes, d takes e5, and his intelligent plan is that he wants to go e6, capturing this f7 square, covering it, and threatening checkmate in the future. So very smart by Jeffrey. Rook b6. Uh, my rook doesn't have much space to go. If I fold to f7, there's mate. Uh, so my rook is a bit stranded, uh, goes to the safest place in my opinion. I mean, I'm already losing here and 10-year-old and self knows it. Uh, so knight d2 and now queen e8. Whew. So knight, knight d2, just like a waiting move, waiting for me to make mistakes because at this point in the game, uh, most of my moves are mistakes. Uh, and so queen e8 uh, and e5 really hurts at this point. So e5 hurts a lot, threatening a mate on h Eight. And so uh, here it's completely losing, and I play a bishop a c5. Now, here uh, Jeffrey goes, as we said uh, two seconds ago, so bishop g6 attacking my queen once again. Why can't my queen go to e7? Uh, well, checkmate on h8. So this is a recurring threat that's hurting me bad at this point in the game. And so I get my queen to c6. So again, putting my pieces all threatening to put my pieces all uh, on the queen side, and really he does this perfectly. And this is how I lose, is because I have no defenders on my king, because he just oosted them out of there. And so white to play and win in this position, mate in two moves. Uh, can you find it? White played e7 check, uh, forcing me to take this pawn with bishop takes e7, and now queen h8 checkmate. And uh, White is completely winning here. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I shook hands with him crying in the bathroom 10 seconds later. Um, but you know what? I, I knew coming into the game that it wasn't going to be an easy tournament, a seven-round tournament. I'm 1,100, and people fly from, uh, you know, Mexico, the U.S., uh, you know, uh, the West Coast uh, to come play. And so that's crazy. I knew that coming in. And so this is how I lost against Jeffrey Zhang. Um, I really forgot about this game. To be honest, I was looking for my weirdest game ever, which if I find, I'm totally going to show you. Um, and so this is just an amazing game. Uh, <laughs> what a historical game for me. Uh, I played uh, the 32nd best chess player in the world at the time. Uh, a great achievement for me, even though I lost. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe to this channel. I'm going to be making more. I'm in full boost mode. Uh, so yeah. Have a great one. What's up to the chest nerd? There we have the channel. Hey, this is Beyond Outro Zach here. Just wanted to add a few things uh, to this video. First of all, I actually remember um, Jeffrey Zhang's state of mind. He was super calm and kept with himself. He was super quiet. Um, and in fact, he never introduced himself at the chessboard, uh, nor did I. And it was just like really quiet going into it. And then we started playing and, you know, he was uh, very sage. Also, at that tournament in 2010, um, there was a little stand and I got to buy these three books, which I cannot find anywhere. So <laughs> if anybody knows where you can find the rest of these series, do let me know. Finally, I did some research and turns out Jeffrey Zhang won our section in the U10 of that tournament. So because of me in round one, uh, Jeffrey Zhang won the U10 uh, in the NAYCC 2010. Uh, and so that's crazy <laughs> that he won the tournament and then five years later becomes GM. And then uh, 10 years later becomes uh, 32nd best chess player in the world, which is absolutely phenomenal. And cheers to him. If you're watching Jeffrey, uh, absolutely cheers. You're a good laddie.